So now when Reynolds number is larger than 2300, uh, that's what we call a turbulent flow. And uh, we want to know our um, Darcy friction factor um, or the friction head loss, then we definitely need to know what the velocity distribution in a turbulent type of flow. Still don't know much about what it means to have a turbulent flow, but for the time being, let's um, take it as the flow in a pipe when the Reynolds number is larger than 2300. So the idea is um, we need now to find the velocity profile for a turbulent flow. Um, remember how we did it for a laminar flow where we um, solved the Navier-Stokes equation under very strict assumptions of unidirectionality and um, so on. That wouldn't work for a turbulent flow. Um, we can't get a closed form, easy solution from the Navier-Stokes equation uh, that way. Um, so the approach has been empirical slash um, using scaling arguments. And we will see that in the next um, slide. So because of the lack of, um, because of the lack of a closed form analytical solution for a, for a fully turbulent um, pipe flow, our reliance has, as we, uh, has been on, um, has been on uh, our, scaling arguments as well as uh, empirical data, either that come from experiments or that come from numerical experiments using computer simulations that are based on the Navier-Stokes equation. Um, so we will just actually jump to the solution uh, to the velocity distribution as it has been found through scaling arguments as well as through um, uh, empirical means, experiments, and so on. And it is so. It, uh, on uh, here we plot the velocity um, of the flow as a function of distance above uh, the wall of the pipe. Um, so here we're not using R, we're using um, a slightly modified coordinate system. And uh, you can see that when we plot the velocity as a function of distance from the wall, we get a straight line. But mind you, we have... Um, we have a log linear scale. So in fact, this is a logarithmic profile and we call it the log law of the wall. So this is a very famous, it's probably one of the most famous plots in fluid mechanics, um, the log law of the wall, and uh, it describes the turbulent flow in a pipe as well as in other, um, in, in other uh, geometric settings. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. So the logarithmic law of the wall, um, the reason why we have a log scale is because we can zoom in very close to the wall. And that's exactly where we want to find our the gradient in the velocity to get our shear stress. So, um, so when we have a logarithmic profile, when we have a log scale, sorry, uh, it helps us to zoom in and uh, get a better feel of um, of what the of what the gradient near the wall is going to be. Um, so as we so this logarithmic profile is given by this uh, equation. So you see we plot the velocity u of y and y being the distance from the wall um, versus the distance from the wall. And you see it has a logarith uh, it's a natural logarithm. And then you have um, kappa and beta, which are um, empirical constants that are found either experimentally or using a uh, numerical um, simulation uh, simulations, with new being our kinematic viscosity over here. So now, uh, remember we said this is, so here's the empirical part of it. Now we need to talk about the our, the uh, scaling arguments, which also can lead to a logarithmic shape profile. And these are based on velocity scales and length scales. So here comes the information we learned about in chapter 5. Um, so uh, if this is the wall of my pipe, right, and because it's at y equals zero, and this is the distance from the wall. 
uh, then there is shear stress on my wall. And uh, when you divide the shear stress by the density, you're going to get a velocity square. And you take the square root of it, so that should be square root, you're going to get a velocity. And that's called the friction velocity. Um, and it's our import, it is the important velocity scale. It's different than the velocity at the center of the pipe. The center of the pipe is uh, very far away, it's somewhere here, but very close to the wall here. Um, the dominant velocity is the friction velocity far away from the wall uh, near the center line the dominant velocity is the average flow velocity that we uh, we've all been familiar with so here here is a new uh, velocity scale of important when we're dealing with this type of velocity of um, of flag law of the world which we call um, you'll you'll see this a lot when people talk about boundary layers so this is actually a boundary layer profile and in boundary layers <clears throat> the important velocity scale is the uh, friction velocity and I've seen hundreds of thousands of dollars um, being spent uh, trying to find what this wall shear stress uh, is in different kinds of uh, settings um, uh, experimentally as well as numerically and then the second important um, so from from this velocity scale, we can actually derive a, a viscous length scale, and that would be the wall unit, which is the L star. So the L star, um, you get it from dividing the kinematic viscosity with the friction velocity. The kinematic viscosity has units of meter square per second, um, and the velocity, as you see, has units of meter per second. So you're going to end up with, for the L star, you're going to get a, with units of meter. So this is the viscous wall unit, and it's the other, um, it is the, it is part of our scaling arguments, or people who have actually come to this conclusion, rather than experimentation, they were able to come to this conclusion of having a logarithmic profile uh, through simple argumentation uh, like so. Uh, not that simple, but um, smart argumentation like so. Okay, um, now what, that what we haven't talked about is we said this is the distance from the wall, this is the velocity of the flow, and this is the distance of the wall. But here, they are plotted in a dimensionless, um, uh, as dimensionless numbers. So here we're plotting uh, the U plus, and it is the velocity in meter per second normalized by the friction velocity, the U star that we have uh, gotten here. And our uh, distance from the wall is Y plus. It's a dimensionless number. And it's just our distance Y divided by the um, wall unit uh, that we have just talked about. The wall unit is going to... Um, and these are two these are the two important uh, scales in this problem uh, that will help us understand what the velocity profile is going to be and then will help us understand what it means um, to get the shear stress in this kind of uh, very zoomed in situation uh, very close to the wall because remember this is the wall is the wall smooth is the wall rough uh, that's important. So, um, so here we're, now we're talking wall units uh, from wall unit 10 to wall unit 1000, uh, 5000. The log law of the wall dominates. Very, very close to the wall, we have what's called the linear uh, velocity profile. So it's the inner layer. Uh, and that inner layer is important because it's very close it is the closest uh, region to the wall of the pipe now the pipe roughness becomes um, can modify this inner layer and um, so we will see that in the next slide so now we're st so now we're starting to talk about pipe roughness and its relation to the um, viscous wall in it uh, as we said here, Y is the distance from the wall, so it is uh, the capital R, the pipe radius, divide, minus the distance from the center of the pipe. Um, 
So at the wall, y is equal to zero, and at the center line of the pipe, y is equal to r. So it has a it has an inverse relationship between y, small y, and small r. All right. So here we plot the logarithmic profile in uh, in a shape that you understand. So this is the log profile that was on the previous graph, and in fact here it's zoomed so much for us to be able to see it. Uh, so what is drawn in this circle here that we've circled is actually this thing um, in the square. Um, and here comes the effects of the pipe roughness. So now you can you get you get a picture of what's uh, going on. This is the distance y uh, that we have talked about, uh, while the distance r is measured from the center, small r is measured from the center of the pipe. Um, so the importance of the wall unit uh, has to do, if, new, if we now start looking at the pipe material uh, and we look at, the, uh, at it under a microscope, we will see features um, of mountains and valleys. Uh, and these are called roughness uh, features. And now, if these roughness features, uh, the relative, um, the ratio between these rough roughness features measured in millimeter, which we call them the epsilon, relative to the wall unit, the uh, which we have computed from the friction velocity, uh, depending on how large the epsilon to the wall unit, our pipe can be considered smooth or rough. So this, so from a from a hydrodynamic, from a fluid mechanics point of view, um, the pipe being rough or smooth really depends on actually the velocity um, of the flow, the type of fluid that you're using. So the same exact pipe material, the same exact pipe. Um, you can run it in case A, and it would be considered smooth, hydrodynamically smooth, but you can run it at different conditions of velocity and fluid, and it would be actually considered rough. So this is, this is the point behind this whole exercise, uh, is to introduce the concept of roughness and how it is important in, um, in turbulent uh, pipe flows. You see, if you remember in laminar flows, when the flow was unidirectional, axisymmetric, and so on, we did not have to even talk about roughness uh, or roughness effects, primarily because roughness effects in a laminar uh, type of flow um, have no importance. So uh, they don't affect the shear stress, they don't affect, at least in a global fashion, they don't affect um, our energetics. So we can uh, solve our problem without worrying about roughness effects. But once we get turbulent, we jump above Reynolds number of 2,300, so we go to Reynolds number 5,000, 10,000, half a million and so on, we now have to start worrying about the roughness effect. And as we have seen, we can have pipes uh, based on the uh, this roughness effect and its relative ratio to the wall unit, we can have rough pipes or smooth pipes. The same pipe can be rough or smooth, just like we have uh, talked about. So here, here, uh, this cartoon uh, shows you uh, the roughness effects relative to the um, to the sublayer, the linear uh, part of the um, boundary layer profile. And you can see when the roughness effects, that's the, the, the pipe roughness, stick into the linear profile, they can modify it and uh, they can um, change the shear stress in a significant fashion. But if my roughness effects uh, are actually very small, such as so, they don't stick out into... Um, uh, beyond one wall unit or half a wall unit or so, then, um, so here, then we, our pipe is considered smooth. So turbulent flows, uh, some of them can be considered rough and some of them can be considered uh, smooth, hydrodynamically rough and hydrodynamically smooth. And now we understand uh, what rough and smooth means in relation to the type of pipe material and to the type of flow. So it's not just the pipe material. 
Um, and now once we have all this uh, nailed uh, down, we can start talking about the velocity gradient close to the wall and getting the shear stress um, near the wall. So here are some pipe materials, uh, steel, iron, uh, glass, plastic, and so on. And here is the roughness um, uh, root mean square uh, roughness measured in millimeter. And you can see we're really talking microscopic levels. So just the standard steel pipes that, you, um, uh, that you're familiar with have a roughness of 0.05 millimeter. So that's around um, one hair width. So, that is, so let's see. A millimeter is a thousand microns. So this is around 50 microns. So this is pretty much on the order of the, um, of the width of, uh, of a human hair. So we're talking about really small, tiny numbers and we're about microscopic scales, things that we really need to look under the microscope to be able to see. And hence, we needed this type of logarithmic profile to be able to um, try to start to um, to appreciate and um, fathom these um, these different scales. Um, so now that we have established, we uh, the same pipe can be rough or smooth depending on the hydrodynamic conditions. Um, we're just going to move on to talk, first talk about uh, smooth um, turbulent pipe flows, and we will start with the first parental. Um, result for the friction uh, factor with Reynolds number. As you can see, it's a smooth pipe, so we don't have a roughness effect. Uh, the roughness effect uh, doesn't show up in uh, this slide. So here is you'll see, the first thing you'll notice about this um, about this relationship, the parentals uh, first parentals relationship. He modified it later on. Uh, is it's implicit in nature, so the fr uh, in its nature, uh, the friction factor exists on both sides of the equation, and you have um, so it's implicit. To solve it, you really need to plot it or do some. It's uh, it's nothing. It's not something that you can just plug and chug directly. You have to maybe do some um, graphical solution for this to be able to uh, to get to the answer. So let's say you start with Reynolds number. Uh, you, you, you stick in Reynolds number, but you still have the um, friction factor under the log, and you have the friction factor on the other hand side, and there's they have roots and so on. Uh, so, graphical solution can can be uh, can easily solve this. Uh, then, um, Prantil went on and he tweaked those factors. Um, and he modified the 1.99 to 2, and the 1.2 he took it down to uh, 0 0.8, and he felt that this um, uh, that this was a better representation uh, and agreed better with experimental uh, experimental data. Still, it's implicit. So Blasius came and he um, uh, proposed. A, an explicit solution because if you want a very quick number, you don't want to go plot it. Uh, he proposed this uh, explicit solution, um, which has a Reynolds number to the one fourth uh, relationship. Um, and Blasius' relationship is valid between four, Reynolds number 4000 and 100,000. So we're still, as you can see, talking about smooth pipe. We don't see the epsilon, uh, which is the pipe roughness in the, in, in the equation. So if we take the Blasius um, friction factor and try and compute the HF, we, you um, take the, the Blasius friction factor, stick it in, and you will find that the rho GHF, which is the delta P, the pressure drop in a pipe. So what is what this delta P is the delta P friction we have talked about. So if I have a pipe of length L and of diameter D that has fluid rho and viscosity mu that runs through it at a certain velocity V, uh, then so it has to it's this is supposed to be a straight pipe. Then for me to be able to get and this pipe is level and there's no pump, no turbine, 
uh, for me to be able to this to get this type of flow rate, this velocity, I really need to supply this pressure difference between the inlet and the outlet for this type of fluid uh, and diameter and length of pipe. Um, but the important thing is you have this uh, V to the 7 fourth, so the pressure drop in a smooth uh, turbulent pipe flow goes with almost velocity squared 1.75 so the delta p for a smooth turbulent pipe flow uh, is v to the 1.75 we went through the laminar case previously and if you go a few slides actually in the previous um, video you will notice that the delta p for a laminar uh, flow um, goes with uh, linearly with the velocity. So uh, we can plot that over here. So here's your pipe as your velocity. So here's your velocity and this is the pressure drop that we measure between the inlet and the outlet of the pipe, P1 minus P2. As you increase your velocity, your friction increases linearly. Uh, but at a certain uh, place, and you, you now expect what this place is going to be, it's we're getting close to hitting Reynolds number of 2,300. So here we've been below Reynolds number of 2,300, if we compute it. And then uh, we don't continue on this line because we hit Reynolds 2,300. We actually now start moving at a much higher friction. Um, and that's the uh, almost uh, quadratic, the V.175 power. And that's because our flow turns turbulent. So we actually see, we can uh, see from data, from experimental data, what it means to be laminar and what it means to be turbulent just from the energetics, from, from the level of energy that you have to stick in. Because remember, this pressure drop um, is your, uh, comes from the enthalpy. It's the flow work part in the enthalpy. So um, we, we see this from an, uh, from an energetic point of view. And now we, have, uh, we want to go on and talk about uh, rough pipes. And with rough pipes, uh, remember now our roughness heights are comparable to the wall unit and the pipe uh, roughness features stick into the linear velocity profile, the uh, viscous sublayer that we have talked about when we were looking at the logarithmic velocity profile. And we have different relationships. So we're just going to present them. Um, uh, we're going, we, in fact, we are only going to present one relationship, the Colebrook uh, relationship. And it's again, now you see the friction factor in it, you see Reynolds number, and you see the epsilon. Here, it's non-dimensionalized by the diameter of the pipe. So, um, again, it's an implicit relationship. So, you have the friction factor on both sides. Um, so, you need some type of graphical solution. And this is what uh, engineers use for um, getting the friction uh, for computing the friction, um, the Darcy friction factor and the friction head loss and the f friction pressure drop uh, for rough pipes. All right, so because this is an important result and uh, it is the accepted design formula, um, Moody uh, uh, went on and plotted this um, this relationship, so uh, for he kept epsilon constant uh, for each fixed uh, epsilon, he plotted the um, friction factor with a Reynolds number, and then he went to do another plot for a, a different epsilon, and he ended up with the Moody shot. So on the Moody shot, he has Reynolds number here, and he had the Darcy friction factor, the F uh, over here, so that's your F. And each one of those curves belongs to one value of uh, roughness, pipe roughness. And here it is non-dimensionalized with the diameter, so epsilon over D. 
And if you look at Trello, so if you look at Trello's number uh, right here, uh, we we notice that this is Reynolds number a thousand. Here's two thousand, uh, and here is our three thousand. So somewhere in between, so probably somewhere here. That's twenty three hundred, and that's where we expect our um, flow to go from laminar to turbulent. So as you can see, um, we have the laminar flow plotted over here. And remember, we when we derive the friction factor, it was 64 over Reynolds number. And because this is a log, log scale, so when you take the log, uh, so here we have F was, uh, for this laminar uh, curve, F was 64 over RE. Um, so on a linear uh, on a linear graph uh, you'll get the 1 over X type relationship but when you take the log of both sides you're actually going to get um, log F is equal to log 64 minus uh, log 64 minus the log of Reynolds number so a constant minus log of the Reynolds number. And this is why you have a negative slope because you have uh, a minus sign over here in front of the Reynolds number. So if this is your Y, which is the log F over here because it's a logarithmic profile and the log Reynolds number is the X, you have a straight line with a negative slope. So that's our laminar, uh, laminar flow. And we only have one profile because laminar flow is independent of the roughness uh, effect. Uh, it just doesn't show up in there. Uh, it doesn't affect the flow. It doesn't affect the shear stress. It doesn't affect uh, the energetics of the uh, system when our flow is laminar. But once we exceed this critical limit uh, of 2300 to 3000, we now start moving to, we start transitioning to a turbulent type of flow. So we start moving uh, in this direction. And now as we go to the, in this direction, we'll see two types of, there is um, in fact two, um, the smooth pipes are actually just one curve, which is right over here. The lowest curve is the smooth turbulent pipes or smooth turbulent flows. Uh, it's the uh, one at the bottom and every other one has its own epsilon over D so every other curve has its own um, is labeled with some type of epsilon over D so this curve is labeled with epsilon over D uh, this curve is labeled with this epsilon over D and as and so on and this curve is labeled with the 0 0.05 and on the uh, here on the left hand side you have the uh, friction factor. So that is your Moody chart. It really summar sums up and summarizes everything that we have talked about um, in this chapter. And now, um, so you want to consider it as another equation um, right next to the uh, first law of thermodynamics. So this is one more equation that you are uh, dealing with, except you really need to know which one of those I don't know, 20, 30 equations, maybe 15, 20 equations you want to use in here. Um, and there you go. Um, so here is there's this dashed line. We were going to talk about it um, uh, last thing, uh, this dashed line, which we just highlighted as red. And as you see to the right of this dashed line, the friction factor, if I extend it right over here, uh, once I get once I hit this point, no matter how much I increase my Reynolds number, I don't see any note I don't notice any difference in the friction factor. So my friction factor, so that's what we call complete turbulence. Um, and incomplete turbulence, my friction factor becomes independent of Reynolds number. And as you can see, for rough pipes, very rough pipes, we can hit this uh, very soon. Uh, and we can imagine, because we are very rough over here, um, 
we have high friction factor. But when we go to very smooth pipes, so such as this one, um, we need to get to a very high Reynolds number before we become independent, before the friction factor becomes independent of, um, of Reynolds number. And in other cases, we never hit that, uh, that curve for practical reasons. So that is your Moody chart. So it is now, um, it's sold in handbooks. So you always have it in your back pocket, but now you can have it on your mobile phone. And um, you'll notice this alternative axis on top. And it's for practicing engineers uh, who, um, where you have instead of Reynolds number. So here when you're talking about water, um, you the uh, kinematic viscosity is already plugged in and you just plot the VD because many engineers work with water uh, and it makes life easier for them to uh, get a quick feel of what the friction factor is going to, to be. Well, with this, we have concluded um, pretty much what we wanted to talk about with uh, pipe flows. Uh, but in fact, before we do that, let's um, talk, talk a little bit more about what it means to be laminar and what it means to be turbulent. We talked about this um, divider line, Reynolds number, where we are below 2300 and when we are above 2300. But why, what has that got to do with anything? Um, remember in this, so if I have on my left hand side, I have a laminar flow coming out of a pipe and on the right hand side, I have um, a turbulent flow coming out of a pipe. And I would like you from now on to uh, change the word turbulent and uh, erase it and use the word mixing. So turbulent flow um, is synonymous to mixing. Uh, with laminar flow, we, we said that the flow moves in sheets parallel to each other, and they don't really interact with each other. Material doesn't cross, uh, doesn't move across um, between those different sheets. They go parallel to each other, so they go in parallel uni universes that, and they don't exchange um, they don't exchange stuff, they don't exchange material. Uh, so you put, um, you put a drop of, let's say, um, milk in honey, it's gonna sit there just because um, it does not, um, um, it does not diffuse, it doesn't mix very well, primarily because, um, because Reynolds number can be very small in there. Um, but now you put a drop of ink in water, you'll see that it's going to, and you just give it a little shake, you'll see it's going to diffuse uh, in all directions. So that's an analogy. Uh, but what's really happening here, um, if I take a fluid particle that's, so we took a fluid particle and we saw that it actually, in a laminar flow, that it went in sheets. But if I take a fluid particle in a turbulent type flow when my Reynolds number is beyond 2300, uh, this fluid particle can have any type of fragged type of, um, of uh, flow path. And we can actually notice that from the surface profile of uh, this stream that comes out of the, of the pipe. So if you change the word turbulent with mixing, then you've you've captured most of uh, you've, you've captured the idea of what's going on in a turbulent flow so that's from a flow visualization uh, point of view from um, the the paths of the of the flow of the fluid particles remember here we had our flow to be our assumptions in laminar flow when we were dealing with the navier stokes equation was it being unidirectional fully developed here it's not unidirectional. My fluid particle can go in any direction it, li it, li it likes to go to. However, the most dominant velocity, so if I were to plot those velocities to scale, I will have this as my dominant velocity, and I will have probably some, um, some type of um, perturbation type of velocity go riding on top of it. 
that's that's this is the velocity that causes mixing and this is my my uh, mainstream convective type velocity um, so that's one point of view to see what it means to have a turbulent uh, flow we can stick in a velocity measurement device so a point wise velocity measurement device over here and we plot it versus time so we measure the velocity u in this direction at this particular point as a function of time for a laminar flow we'll notice that our velocity remains constant uh, for a turbulent flow we'll see that um, we have a steady dc type of velocity riding on it some um, alternating type of current flow uh, which is what we have talked about right over here it's this part the mixing part of the flow uh, you still have the main flow going but you'll have this mixing power riding on top of that uh, main flow which is these ruggedness features that we have uh, seen on top and uh, if your Reynolds number is right at 2300 or close uh, sometimes your flow can be nice and smooth and and other uh, times um, it will just burst into uh, an episode of uh, of turbulence but it wouldn't be turbulent all the time just episodes of turbulence so that's from a statistical point of view from a velocity measurement uh, point of view and we can talk a little bit more about the um, um, it's the mixing um, nature of turbulence and here we have this is actually a historic uh, Reynolds experiment and he had a glass pipe uh, which you see the wall here and he did this experiment for uh, at least what we have what we see here is four different values of flow velocity uh, or Reynolds which is increasing Reynolds number um, you inject dye with a hypodermic needle at this point so as you inject dye, it, it, um, it convects with the flow. And we see that the dye um, continues in a straight line. So there is no mixing between the layers that we, in a laminar type of flow. As we increase our Reynolds number, we start seeing some mixing. And we notice that the color of the dye here um, just dies away because of the mixing, because of the dilution. And more and more so when we get uh, to higher and higher Reynolds number. Notice the extent of the mixing of the path of, a, of the dye streak uh, not becomes wider, but also, and well, but also at the same time, the, the dye concentration becomes less and less because it covers a larger and larger area. So in that sense, turbulence means pretty much mixing. So again, remove the word turbulent and just add the word mixing. You're going to get the same, uh, a very similar effect. It, and it's easier to, to understand. Um, just mixing sugar into your cup of coffee or your creamer into your cup of coffee uh, by if you just add the creamer and let it sit in there it's going at slow velocity it's laminar so you try to increase the velocity to make it turbulent by uh, stirring it with um, with a stick or a, a stirrer um, uh, and here's pro here is uh, a a different take on that same experiment and here is some more flow visualization if you guess which one is the laminar flow which one has the uh, parabolic velocity profile in this type of experiment you uh, inject a dye streak over here and let it convect and you'll see if in a laminar flow you'll you'll get this nice parabolic velocity profile because the uh, this fluid particle all these fluid particles were injected at the same time you injected a line of fluid this one was the fastest so it moves the farthest while this was you get closer to the wall you get slower and slower and we don't see much mixing uh, here it's black no dye and here it's white there is a lot of dye while in the other cases we'll see that there is a lot of mixing um, going on so this is our laminar case and these are our turbulent cases and the more 
the higher the Reynolds number, the faster the mixing is going to, um, to occur. And lastly, if we look at the velocity profiles between a turbulent and laminar flow, uh, the velocity profile for a laminar flow was parabolic. The maximum velocity was actually double the average velocity. While in a turbulent flow, the maximum, the velocity profile is much more blunt. Um, and the maximum velocity is only 10-20% larger than the average velocity. So it's more like a plug type of flow. Uh, and here we have our boundary layer, where our velocity suddenly jumps from the no-slip condition to the maximum velocity in a, in a very short distance. Uh, while for a laminar case, it takes the whole pipe radius for it to, for the velocity to develop to the maximum velocity. Um, so that's the story of the friction head loss. The friction head loss uh, depends on the type of, in a pipe, uh, depends on the type of uh, flow, whether it is laminar or whether it's turbulent. And we define a laminar flow uh, being a flow with a diameter based Reynolds number less than 2300 and a turbulent flow uh, to be larger than 2300. So we know we looked at the velocity profiles, which then we moved on to develop the pressure drop and the friction head loss and the, fr and the friction factor. Uh, and we noticed that the, uh, for a turbulent flow, the um, pressure drop was much more expensive than for a laminar flow. Uh, it had a almost a power 1.75 with the velocity relationship than the laminar flow, which was linear with velocity. That is the pressure drop. So this is um, this is it about laminar and terminal flow, and we still have two things to do in this chapter. We want to solve a few problems, uh, but also we want to talk about uh, our project as well as uh, talking about minor and major losses. So far, we have been discussing losses in uh, straight segments of straight of um, straight segments of round pipes but what if we have curved pipes and pipe fittings and valves and so on uh, in in industrial settings in um, uh, in uh, flow distribution systems uh, fittings can be important and can play an important role in the energetics of the system that we want to um, tackle. So we will stop here and in the next lecture we will go over um, over some problems as well as go over the um, minor pipe losses which come from fittings. Thank you for listening.